Hello, I'm Damien Barrett and welcome to the 2018 wash-up for the Collingwood Football Club brought to you by Carter. Callum Toomey and Matthew Lloyd are here with me. Lloydie, 12 months ago there was a lot of doom and gloom about this team, but not now. No, there was even doom and gloom after round two, Damo, but uh, they were a united group. They played for each other. They believed they had momentum and uh, they were two minutes away from being a premiership side. It's amazing what they did this year, Damo. And one of the great stories, I think, for me was Jordan Dugowie. He was just outstanding. We saw that on grand final day. Three goals, one of the heroes of the performance. And one of the stories of the season started so poorly. It was a low light at the start of the year, wasn't it, Lloydie? Because he looked like his career was in jeopardy. He got done for drink driving in the summer. But his return was just amazing. He kicked 48 goals from 21 games. He's on the verge of being a superstar of the competition. He, what he does is just dominant up, up the ground, and then he can move forward and just... Uh, and kick goals like this. So he's, he's a really hard matchup. Tore Alex Rance apart yeah. in the prelim and was on, on, on all finals. I think on two of the three goals he kicked in the grand final from the midfield position. Is that the future for him, Lordy? Oh, I think they need to play him in the midfield more than they mm. do, Damo. So I think he's a 60% midfield, a forward, sorry, mm. 40% midfield in my opinion. We refer to the doom and gloom yeah. and then you get to round two and they're zero and two. And I think yeah. all of us thought, here we go again. They get to round three, they beat Carlton in a pretty sort of scrappy affair. Then this game, round four, Friday night in Adelaide. This ended up being what was to come for the remainder of the season. It caught Adelaide by surprise. I think it caught the football industry by surprise. But what we saw that night, the emergence of Jaden Stevenson with five goals. You saw Josh Thomas there who kicked 40 goals for the season. Side bottom who had an outstanding year. Grundy was the, was the man of the match in that uh, particular game for, for my reckoning. And it was just the start of what was to become a very, very good season. No doubt, Damo, and it wasn't just that, as you said, that game there uh, blew the whole football world away. Mm. We thought, didn't see this one coming, and it was their pace and ball movement that night. It was set the tone as well, because they carried that through to the prelim, wasn't it? That was it probably was. their best performance in nearly a decade, probably since that 2011 Yeah, um, and, you, and you get to that second last uh, weekend of the season, and they put away last year's premiers. Again, all those names have already rattled off, and the goey there, crucial to what happened in this game and the whole season, and they... They blew them away, the Tigers ended their season, and then it was the emergence of that man there, Mason Cox, who was a story of that night, and, and in many respects, one of the stories of the 2018 AFL season. He was able to do it on grand final day in yeah. the second half as well, Lord. He wasn't he overcame a poor start to have an influence. I think they learned how to kick the ball to him too uh, as the season rolled on, so it will be a scary proposition next year. Don't Did it through adversity mm. at, at times, didn't they, Collingwood? The injury toll again hit hard. Yeah, it did. They were unlucky this year. I think uh, it was been soft tissues in the past. But let's take a look at some of those players. Can't do anything about this. Matthew Sharonberg, unfortunately, did another knee. Uh, Adam Chalor, this one, uh, what a comeback it was from him doing both hamstrings and having to have surgery. Uh, the next player there, Daniel Wells. We'll discuss him later in his future at the Collingwood Football Club. Lyndon Dunn, I, I didn't think he'd make it at Collingwood, but uh, it was a, a brilliant story, story wasn't, wasn't he? And uh, add that to that, uh, Jamie Elliott, Darcy Moore, Alex Fasolo, Ben Reid, hmm. the injuries kept going for them. We also had another drugs controversy yeah. to, to deal with when Sam Murray uh, from, a, from a late July match was detected uh, on match day for a performance enhancing substance. And the full yeah. story of that is yet to play out, but uh, it's not a good story. And it's the third Collingwood player to be detected using yeah. uh, under under the Asada. What's situation. the next step there, Damien? He was at the game on the weekend in the suit. Was that be the last time we saw him in the Collingwood suit? Oh, I'd, I'd imagine so. He's facing four years, and again, we need to await the B sample uh, findings to be made public on that. And only then can we get to the next yeah. uh, level and next chapter of this story. Okay, let's mark them out of ten. It was a stunning season for Collingwood, and uh, they fell ever so yeah. short of the main prize. So close to a ten day. No, but I'll uh, give them a nine. Yeah, I'm nine yeah. as well, Lordy. Uh, a great year. Yeah, I'm giving a little bit yeah. more than you guys, but uh, you can't give them ten, but you can give them, I think, the next best. So who cleaned up for Collingwood in 2018? Kel? Yeah, Jaden Stevenson for mine, Damo. He was outstanding. Played every game. Won the, not, no, no, the NAV Rising Star. First Collingwood player to ever do that. I think the way he played, Lord, he changed the way Collingwood played in attack. He just added such electricity up forward. Yeah, he kicked five, uh, didn't he, at Eddie Head Stadium for Victoria from a wing. But yeah. uh, they, they had him out of the goal square for Collingwood in his first season. 38 goals for the year, including a couple on grand final days. So big, exciting things to come for Jaden Stevenson in the future. Yeah, Damo, for mine, he's obviously Jaden Stevenson. He was turning Stephen May inside yeah. out. That's mm. how good he was by the end. We, what about his grand final first quarter two? Two goals as well. Brody Grundy for mine, one of the great ruck, uh, seasons I've ever seen from a ruckman. Just his ability to not just tap the ball to his uh, midfielders, but at ground level. They they just couldn't go with him. Scott Lice said had to tag him in the grand final. That's how damaging Gr Brody Grundy is. How do you think his grand final was? Uh, I thought he couldn't have tried any harder. It's yeah. just that they came with a plan just to nullify him around the ground. So he dominated hit outs, dominated hit outs to advantage. 
but just probably wasn't as effective as uh, other weeks around the ground. Yep. Is he better than Gorn in your eyes, Lotto? I like the way he plays yeah. more so than Gorn. Gorn's a dropping behind the ball sort of ruckman. Grundy's always at the contest yeah. moving forward, and I like the way he plays. There's always people yeah. and uh, organisations under pressure. A couple of people at the uh, pies who I think are, are worthwhile talking about under this particular section. Daniel Wells, still got a contract for mm. next year. I think there's a bit to play out there. There's a, a line of thought from some yeah. people that there may be uh, an arrangement mm. reached whereby he gets some of that money that he's owed to, to not actually play, given his body has let him down yet again. Yeah, speaking of bodies letting people down, that's the case with Darcy Moore, isn't it? We saw him go down with uh, several hamstring injuries across the season. Had a contract offer in front of him since the start of the year. Sydney have been circling, wants a fair bit of money, mm. but at the moment it's averaged nine disposals over 50-plus games. So if he stays, he needs to get fit and get the most out of his talent. Lord, I think there are a good place to be, Colin, yeah. wasn't it, this year? Latham Buckley changed the environment. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of laugh options for you here. Uh, yeah, we've picked a very unique one. I've never seen anything like this in AFL football. Everyone will remember this. <laughs> Scotty Pendlebury, the game just stops for Scotty, and even the pigeon just got caught up in the moment. Uh, so just he just... Uh, Bill Laurie's the only one disappointed there. The <laughs> pigeon was OK, which is fantastic. You can see he's happy he's, as well on the MCC. Went, went off with the concussions. Up. Yeah. All good. They've got a few decisions to make. They went hard after Tom Lynch and they didn't get him. It means that they feel that they need a, another key forward. Mason Cox elevated himself into the, the good position that he, uh, that he found himself late in the year. But I think he does need some help yeah. in that key component to the structure. So I reckon they'll still look for someone in the trade period. I think if Daniel stays, they need to get just the full season out of him. Make mm. sure he's, he's right to go when it matters because uh, look, his quality and polish and class would have been pretty uh, helpful in grand final day, but they just didn't have him there. Yeah, they did so well in key defence for mine, but uh, they just cannot rely on. Obviously, Lyndon Dunn's done a knee, Sharon Berg's done a knee. Too much was asked of Goldsack. That's not his role. So yes. Stephen May or another key defender has to come in. The they court. were exposed twice by yeah, the Eagles big guys in the yeah. finals, weren't they? Yeah. Okay, they did so well this year. Where does that leave them place for 2019 as you sit here today? I think they got the most out of themselves. So I'm dropping them down to five to eight next year. I reckon they'll be in the top four again. Lordy, I'm with you. I, I just feel they couldn't have gone better for them in so many ways, despite that adversity, that it's going to be so hard just to get back to where they reached uh, in 2018. Kel Toomey, thank you. Matthew Lloyd, thank you. And that's the, the wash-up for the Magpies in 2018.